Hey, Hickok45 here. Now, I don't really appear to be behaving in uh, a threatening manner, do I? In any way? No, I wasn't. But that guy had an AK he was bringing into action. And uh, just demonstrated something we'll talk about a little bit later in this video. But we're going to talk about pocket carry, legal pocket carry today. I know we've been promising you would do some more on uh, legal carry and have been a little bit remiss. Uh, so many guns, so much fun to have. We've, uh, we've uh, not gotten back to it. So we're going to do a little bit today. I'm going to give you some of my experiences with pocket carry, uh, some guns I'm very familiar with that I own, we own, and uh, give you some tips. You know, this is not going to be uh, everything you ever wanted to know about pocket carry, but uh, at least uh, most of what I know. And then we'll do some later things on it too, perhaps. So, a couple of really important factors to begin with. Uh, the pocket <laughs> and, uh, and the gun. Which gun, which pocket, and, and, and those things we've got to really uh, talk about. Uh, and of course, the legalities carry legally or don't carry you know there are a lot of places I can't carry again because of my profession I don't you know I can't carry it's just that simple other than like on a weekend or in summer carry and you're kind of looking at my summer dress you know my attire uh, shorts and a t-shirt and uh, that makes this feasible you know because I'm not working I'm on vacation for about three months and so it's an option for me because it's perfectly legal there are millions of people in the country who are exercising the right to carry and of course pocket carry so uh, if you ever wondered why you walk into a gun shop and there are sometimes hundreds of these little guns of various types if you're kind of new to uh, this genre of gun or the concept of pocket carry or maybe you're an anti-gun person you just kind of stumbled in on this and are uh, astonished that anybody would carry a gun in his or her pocket or purse or whatever sorry there are millions of us out there that do that occasionally uh, and uh, maybe one of them will save your life someday if you're sitting in McDonald's and some crazed lunatic comes in there, so who knows. But anyway, uh, just some basics there. Uh, make sure you're legal always. Uh, I'm too old to go to jail. You might be too young to go to jail. You don't want to be sitting in prison with Bubba as your cellmate. So, back to the pocket. Uh, you need to have a pocket that is devoted to the firearm and uh, nothing else in there three pounds of keys and change and all that i'm gonna put this one back in there there's nothing in there except except that pm9 in that pocket holster okay now we can talk a lot about printing and that kind of thing there's nothing illegal about printing generally in most uh, vicinities but you still don't want to print necessarily and that depends on your situation of course and also uh, is a major factor in what pants you choose and which gun you choose, which holster you choose, and that kind of thing. Most people in Tennessee, we, you know, we're not paranoid about printing, but we don't necessarily want to print. You know, that's just the kind of the thing. I mean, a lot of people carry open, you know, openly, you know, in this country. But uh, still, even though it's not illegal, you'd rather not print if, if possible. Uh, again, I don't know everything there is to know about this, but, you know, the 10 years I was working with the police department, I pocket carried uh, as a backup firearm to my sidearm. I had a Glock, and I would pocket carry quite often a, uh, a little Mustang 380. You know, this was in the 90s. The L this is the days before the LCP and the, the car P380 and a lot of these other wonderful little guns. Or I'd carry a, a J-frame Smith & Wesson 38 Special. You know, when you're in police work, uh, it's even more important, I think, to have a backup gun, you know, to your sidearm, to your belt gun. And most police, you know, maybe I shouldn't divulge that, but most do have a backup gun, of course, if they have a brain. Some have two. But um, so I have some experience there. And, of course, as a legal permit uh, owner for another 10 or 12 years. Uh, so the pocket, you want to keep it clear. If you're going to pocket carry, an important part of this is picking your pants around. Now, this is just some shorts, I, you know, typical of what I wear in the summer. And these were actually long pants, and I found them at Bass Pro, I think, and I zipped off the uh, the leg because I like the pockets. So if you're going to use uh, that type of carry ever, uh, even if it's just periodically, but you know there are going to be some times when you're going to use that pocket for uh, a little PM9 or whatever you have, uh, you test the pockets before you buy shorts, before you buy pants, you know, whatever your 
situation is and whenever you can carry legally. If you know you're going to be wearing those pants, whether they're cargo, their slacks, or uh, shorts, or whatever it is, jeans, test the pocket. Just see what kind of pockets you have. When I'm shopping for, for cargo shorts, I'll, I'll stick my hand in the pockets just kind of see what, whether I like them. I don't like little shallow baby pockets anyway. never have. And so that makes a little bit of difference, I think. And uh, so I, I buy shorts uh, based on that to, to a large extent. And one thing I wanted to show you, now that's a PM9 car. You may not be familiar with all these guns. This is not going to, we're going to turn this into like a multi-gun uh, video where we go into a lot of depth and all these. All these guns are hot, I will say that, okay, because we're going to shoot them. We're going to go through and, tr and just show you uh, early on here that all of these can work as a pocket carry if you have the right pocket. Now, you've got some jeans that fit kind of tight. Uh, most of these won't work. But I'll just show you what it looks like. This is a Glock 27. It's hot. Okay, this is a DeSantis holster. It's uh, you know covers a trigger guard. That's that's one of the basics. You want your trigger guard covered. Has kind of a hook on it to hang up when you pull it out. And usually that works. You got to be prepared for it not working, of course, and uh, be ready to flip it off with the other hand, the off hand, or your thumb, uh, very quickly. But uh, generally they work. Let me show you. This is a Glock 27, baby Glock. Not a gun that most people are going to carry, uh, pocket carry. You know, not many. But just to show you, you know, if you really wanted to, you know, a pair of shorts like this with a good sized pocket, you could do it. You know, I can feel the weight of it, but, you know, you could do it. And the advantage of it is you've got a serious gun. <laughs> so I'm going to just take a couple shots with it here. <laughs> not shooting too well there after holding that other gun, but you you, you know the, the Glock 27 is my one of my favorites and, and I can generally shoot it really well, but that's a big gun. That's a gun that I would feel comfortable taking into to combat. If I were in the military today and they said, okay, you've got to carry either the, the Beretta or the M9 or this, I choose this, okay, because it's just it's a big gun, it shoots well, it, it handles bigger magazines if you need them. and you got a combat weapon there, you know, quote unquote combat that you could actually pocket carry if you wanted to, if you've got the right pocket, you know. I mean, I know a guy that carries a Glock 23 down here in a cargo pocket like that. I mean, I knew of it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you can do that. Now, that hits against my knee, so I don't, I don't like carrying in the cargo pocket. Uh, with cargo pants, that sort of thing, I really prefer it right here in the, the front pocket because it just flops around down there. Just a tip, if you're buying cargo pants thinking, oh, a big pocket would be great, maybe so, but I like it right here. It's just it's just so much better, you know, and it's, it's accessible. Boom, you're ready to go, okay? So, and that's the DeSantis holster again. That holster relies on, again, the hook primarily, you know, to, to hook that on your pants as it comes out, keeps the holster in. If you should pull that out and, and, and it come out with the gun, you've got to be ready to get rid of it, you know, and boom, boom, and go on with your with your business there, okay? Uh, these are nice little holsters, they're cheap, uh, and they work, and they work, and they rely on that hook pretty much to, uh, to do the job. Uh, let's move on to another one here. Here's a classic, that one's hot too, 642 J-frame. More police, more citizens probably carry and have carried that gun than any other single gun on the planet. A little five shot J-frame 38 special. And that's a Kramer holster. I've had that rig, uh, my gosh, 20 years maybe. I carried that a lot when, as a backup when I was uh, working with the police. And it doesn't really have the hook, but it worked okay. Uh, let's look at this one. That's a J-frame. If you like revolvers, that's you just know that's what you want. You don't want to deal with a pocket carry of, a, of an automatic, semi-auto of any kind. You know, these things work. Pull them out and... <laughs> it's something back there, but uh, they feel good to most people. Very reliable. They're going to work. We got Gunner running around, so we have to keep an eye on him. Uh, he's a little crazy, as you might know. Uh, that's that's a viable option. Not not necessarily small. Uh, with a cylinder, you get a little extra thickness there, generally. Uh, but but they do fine. Uh, most most pockets. Not, not as heavy, that gun is not as heavy as the Glock 27. Uh, it's an air weight, it's pretty light. It's got a little bit of thickness, 
but it's light and and it just pulls well it's revolver and you know you just uh got a nice double action pull on them so that that's always uh, a recommended gun if it will fit uh, your purpose your pocket and your hand and, and everything if you like revolvers oh it's in my pocket yeah that's the objective to leave the holster in the pocket when you pull it out right? i always want to cover that trigger guard all right now again if you're new to this this might appear a little dangerous but as with uh, any kind of holster if it covers your trigger guard you know you know you're okay you know your fingers should not be in a trigger guard anyway so it allows you to pick up that gun finger straight you can't get it in there if you want to now this is the uh, uh, the LC9 that uh, you've seen it works as well and uh, now this holster I think is actually for the PM9 I'm not sure I didn't really have a holster for that for pocket carry now that's a gun a lot of people are interested in a lot of people are buying just so I'll show you that one it's a little bigger than the PM9 but you notice we're kind of coming up the scale we went from the Glock baby Glock to the uh, 642 the J frame this I kind of consider the next size maybe down it actually is bigger in some way yeah maybe not but it's a little bit thinner than the revolver and it would work too it's it's a little bit on the large side the guns I'm showing you right now are a little bit on the large size okay for for carry now we got a gunner to deal with I'm just going to shoot over this way take a couple shots in the burn barrel maybe <laughs> Gunner's gonna go run down the the bullets, so uh, so that one would work too if it's not too too large for you. Uh, for me, it's a little big, uh, but it, it would work. It would work. So these three guns I put into that category of yes, they're okay, and uh, you know you've got five shots with the 38. You got you know seven, eight, or nine, depending on how many you put in the mag there, maybe even ten. Uh, with that uh, Glock 27 or Glock 26 and then with the LC9 you've got what you got six or seven rounds there uh, nine millimeter uh, those are all pretty significant firearms they, they really are uh, and they all will carry if you've got a pretty deep pocket and the pants you're wearing are fairly uh, a little baggy a little loose like these are a little loose again if you get in some really tight pants You've got some problems. If you think you want a pocket carry, you don't want anything that just really fits you tightly anyway. You know, like, like pleats or kind of loose, loose fitting. Now, moving down a little bit smaller is the PM9. You know, I like the PM9. That's one of my, uh, my favorites. And I did take a couple shots with that, but we have, uh, I'll put a couple more rounds in it. Uh, this one is a really nice compromise. When we get down to this size, you're you're starting to cook here, I think. Cooking with gas. Uh, this is a, a size I kind of like. It, it, it might be a little large for some outfits, but generally it works. It's one you might want to trot. All right, let's uh, put that in there. All right. Now, that's the one I opened up with, and uh, it works really well. Let's double check. Uh, okay, gunner's back there in the yard. I'm going to go again. It's all part of being safe, knowing where everybody is and all that. One of the advantages of this holster is you've got the little ear on it and what you can do is put your hand in the holster, you can have your thumb on that and now I just broke it loose. You couldn't see it but I broke it loose so that holster has a hook on it but it's definitely not going to come out because I don't even have to hook it now, it's loose. right there works works beautifully by the way that's uh, Alabama holster company do that again comes right out if you're not careful you don't hook it okay so this is a nice option Notice I'm being careful when I slip the gun back in it. Uh, once the trigger guard's covered, you're good, but I want to be careful with that. Uh, this gun is a little thinner than the others I've uh, experimented with. Maybe the LC9, maybe similar. This one's a little smaller, a little lighter, and it's a 9mm. So you're still in 
pretty good caliber range there. You know, the next step down is the 380. I mean, the way I look at it. Uh, this is about as small as you can go and still carry a 9mm. I'm not aware of a 9 that's smaller than this one, really. That's easy to shoot pretty well. All right, so the PM9 is, that's one reason it's so popular. And now there's the CM9, a little less money, and I understand it works really well, too. But that is a really nice size. Now, there may, I'm, I'm not selling car firearms. Uh, I don't even get T&E guns from them. I even contact them to do that. I ought to, I guess. But uh, I like them. And uh, I've not found one. There might be something that's, that's even better. I just haven't encountered it yet. And I do keep track of these things pretty well. But as far as the PM9 or the CM9, that size, because they're the same gun basically, in a 9mm, it's about as small as you can get in a gun in that caliber that you can you know, shoot really well. So uh, if you work with it at all. So that's a, a wonderful choice. And again, you got the hook on that holster, and you all got, also had the thumb. Uh, the hook and the thumb push, you know, work really well. That's a couple of the ways that these holsters work. You, know, you got the hook on the DeSantis, and that's another Alabama holster there. Again, I'm not selling those either. Uh, there may be some other nice Kydex holsters like those. I'm just not aware of yet, but I, I did find those, and I like them. There's another, uh, before I go to the 380s, there's a couple of others here I, I'm bad about not showing people have sent me or given me. Uh, this is the Remora. Now, I've got some others. I think I have a smaller one. I couldn't put my hands on them. These rely on friction uh, pretty much. And he's got her back there playing with his toys. <laughs> Squeeze. Uh, and this one is uh, uh, sticky, sticky holsters. Yeah, they're uh, made in Florida, I think. Uh... Well, actually, I don't know. I'm made in USA, but uh, I was in a gun shop in Nashville, uh, Eastside Gun Shop, and Bill just gave me one of these. And I told him I was going to be doing some more uh, uh, concealed carry and uh, pocket holster stuff, and uh, so he threw that at me and said, uh, "You know, show that." That is one of the. Uh, if I want to, this is one of the uh, the same same type, the uh, Remora. They're very uh, uh, they're a lot of friction involved. They're the rubbery, and so when you put something in those, I think I got yeah. Him, I'd be showing the PM9, so he gave me one for the PM9, and it fits really well. And it doesn't have much of a hook on it. It's it's the uh, the friction issue. So when I pull that gun out, you know, it, it wants to stay in there because it's kind of grabbing my pants. It's just you know very rubbery. And this one's the same way. Now this is a bigger holster for a bigger gun, but it's the same concept. When you put that in your pocket, it. Uh, it just wants to stay in there because, you know, it just, in fact, they're not hard to get out because they, they grab everything. So that's another concept. Uh, you have a holster that has so much friction that it stays in there, okay? And these, both of these also, because of that, they're designed to, to be used as inside the waistband, which we're not going to talk too much about today, but you can just stick them in there, either one of them, the Remora or the Sticky Holster. I kind of like that Sticky Holster. Uh, it's hard to get in, but it, it stays in there. When you pull the gun out, you know, it's see, it's kind of hard to even get out. So it's designed to be used <laughs> without a, a flap or a hook or anything. So, so they're multi-purpose holsters, but they're more in the sticky, interesting gun. This is one that uh, the fellows, I was, again, got in a conversation about this up at uh, Tennessee Gun Country in Clarksville. Matthew Geisel, I think he pronounces that. He makes this little, uh, this is for the LCP, which I've not fired yet. Uh, and it's designed, let me take this one, empty this one, this is P380, uh, a car, it's designed for the LCP, but uh, without the plate on the bottom, and also I have the talon grips on that gun, and it's almost impossible to get in here. It's impossible to get this gun in without uh, struggling a little bit, because it doesn't fit as well. But it's designed, you stick the gun down in it, it's just, again, some of the stuff I happen to have, or run across, or someone threw at me, I uh, wanted to show you some different concepts, but the gun fits down in there, you can see down in the groove, and yeah, I think it sticks out about like that. And it's designed to be in that little wallet, and then you stick your finger through there to hold, and then you stick your finger in there to pull the trigger, and you can just stick that in your back pocket, uh, side pocket, whatever you want. That's the way that's designed to be used. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of having the trigger even that accessible, but, uh, but that's the way that's designed to be used, kind of a wallet. And it has to be open like that, as I understand, uh, or it, it, it uh, violates some ATF rules. Can you believe that? It's, it's classified as a destructive device if you have the gun totally hidden 
in a totally uh, enveloped package of some sort. Eh, weird, but there's some weird laws like that. But that one's legal. Okay, if you're legal. All right. So I appreciate uh, Tennessee Gun Country and East Side uh, Gun Shop there in Nashville uh, throwing those my way. Uh, so we've talked about some bigger guns, some mid-sized pocket guns. Then we get down to the smaller ones. Moving on down to the 380, which is the universal caliber, I think, for pocket carry. Very, very, very popular. And this gun is one of the most popular, the LCP from Ruger. Now, there are others uh, in the same size category. I know Taurus, and of course, you saw the, I have seen here, the P380 from Carr, and there, there are others. There are several that are, uh, SIG makes some, it's just, you name it, Smith & Wesson. There are a lot of guns that, that's about as small as you can get. And then in, uh, in the 380 is as small as you want to go generally uh, for, for pocket carry and for self-defense, the 380. So this, uh, man, I wish I had a nickel for every one of these they've sold. So pretty nice gun. And this is in the Alabama holster as well. So since you're shooting 380, it's a smaller gun. Now I put this in my pocket. This is the one that almost anybody could use, regardless of the pocket, generally speaking. It just pretty much disappears, you know. It's, uh, it's just very small. And still big enough though, you can get a hold of it. You can hook, come out. Very shootable. Uh, a small little gun, one that many of you watching this video have, if you're in the United States, that is right. Sorry, some of you folks overseas, I know this is not a, an issue for you, but uh, 380, the universal caliber for pocket carry. What I showed you before were some bigger calibers and, and even nine that uh, it's, it's doable. This one though, is doable for almost anybody. Uh, if you haven't investigated, if you're thinking about pocket carry, you do not have an aversion to, to semi-automatics. Uh, this gun or one like it is something you'd probably want to look at. Uh, pocket carry, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not always ideal. Uh, but if you have a, a need, a reason, uh, you want to go armed, you know, Second Amendment right, uh, it's something to consider, particularly if you live in the Southwest, uh, the South, where it's hot, and uh, you're not wanting to have to always wear a covered garment, and, and, you know, it's just, it's not easy always, is it? There are compromises. There are compromises. Early on, when we started this, uh, this business here, you know, I, I talked about one of the advantages of pocket carry, and you saw it at that point, I think, was it's really, in some ways, it is the one form of carry where you can actually be fastest with it because you can have your hand on the gun and be non-threatening, you know, in appearance. You know, if something is, uh, if, you're, if you're a police officer walking up on a, 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 a iffy scene, something's going on where, you know, you don't want to have your hand on your gun, perhaps, uh, not as often probably with a uniformed police officer would that be an issue, but uh, in, in lots of uh, other endeavors it could be, you know, just, just whatever. I'll let you create your own scenario, but you can have your hand on that firearm and uh, you don't know what's going on. Uh, someone's about to pull a knife on you or pull an AK or whatever it might be, then you're, you're into action very quickly if you want to be. Without them even knowing, you're anywhere near a firearm. You know, that's, that's one of the biggest advantages of it because if you have a inside the waistband, outside the waistband holster, small the back holster, shoulder holster, whatever, you know, you're kind of reaching around and getting your hand on that firearm and, you know, what, or you're not, you know, so uh, that is one advantage of that. It really is. You definitely, again, want to have that trigger guard covered. You want to be smart about what you're wearing. Uh, you've got to be careful with some of those loose fitting holsters. You don't want to be sitting on somebody's sofa uh, and your gun roll out of your pocket, you know, that kind of thing. That's not proper etiquette, in case you didn't know that. Uh, carrying is a very serious business. As, as you know, if you have a legal carry permit, you've gone through the course, you've proved that you're a law-abiding citizen, you've gone through the background check, you have some sense, you've passed the test, you've uh, fired the gun, showed that you can shoot it, and uh, you know the seriousness of it. In those courses, you know, you get that, that uh, the film, generally, giving you the law, you know, uh, a really uh, quick, uh, intense lesson in the legal issues uh, involved with a firearm, the seriousness of it, you know. So uh, 
So you know the seriousness of it. So you want a good, firm holster, a secure holster, one that covers the, the uh, trigger guard, and then practice with it and uh, you know make sure you're competent with it. You don't want to you know, do something goofy. Uh, but like I say, it's, it's right there, and you can just have your hand in your pocket. You know, whereas you know, the shirt, if you're reaching, you know, there's all the, kinds of other issues that we'll go into later when you're wearing inside the waistband or outside the waistband where you're bending over and doing things. Uh, it's just so simple, easy to print, isn't it? And sometimes it's awkward uh, to carry the gun you want in the holster you like and dress the way you want to dress, you know. But uh, with, with pocket carry, you have a lot of options, and I know it's a jungle out there if you're new with your carry permit. You have not had it long, and if all you can do is go look at a, a gun shelf or a gun show, you know, it's that that's tough. It really is. Uh, I recommend highly that you get with some people who do know a lot about it and kind of screen down, filter down, filter out a lot of the you know, less desirable choices. I've tried to do a little bit of that here to give you an idea. Uh, of the size guns that are that are uh, easy to carry, others that you can carry if you really want to, if you've got the right pockets, and then some that maybe you probably can't, like a Glock 27, but it's possible that you could if you've got the right pockets. So take a lot of care in selecting the clothing you're going to wear, your pockets, uh, your holsters. There are a lot of holsters. I just showed you a few that I happen to have. Hey, Gunner, how you doing, buddy? Come here and see me. I showed you a few holsters. That, that will work and that I happen to have or somebody's thrown at me recently, uh, but there are a bunch of them. I like the Kydex, you know, John doesn't like the Kydex, so everybody has their preferences. Uh, some people prefer a softer holster, some people don't want the hook, they like the, uh, the friction type I showed you from Remora there and sticky holsters, you know, those two would work fine, plus it give you the versatility of going from pocket to maybe inside the waistband with it, you know, simple there. Uh, pull it out, lock it up, Go where you need to go you know so there's advantages and disadvantages to, to most of the forms of carry but bottom line is and i know there are people that think well i can't get my 45 in my pocket holster i can't get my 1911 or my glock 30 in the hop my pocket holster so you 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 wimps in your pocket holsters and your 380s can just you know play with that while i pack my my glock 30. Well, that might be the case, but uh, my guess is that Glock 30 is probably home in the safe more often than it's being carried. Same with that 1911, depending on the job or, or what a person's doing, you know, of course. But, uh, you know, 380 with you is, of course, uh, a mouse gun, whatever you want to call it, with you is a whole lot more valuable than a 45 at home in the safe or up on the mantle. That's just the way that, that is, and uh, we all know that, and you've heard those cliches before. So, pocket carry, the viable form of carry. I've just tried to give you an idea about it. We'll do some more with it, and I just hope this was semi-helpful to you. Life is good.